This is Wellness by Designs, and I'm your host, Andrew Whitfield Cook. Joining us today is George Kokinas, Technical Director of Pharmaco Biotechnologies, and today we're going to be discussing advanced delivery systems for PEA. I'm going to try and say it Parmatol Ethanolamine. Welcome to Wellness by Designs, George. How are you going? Good, Andrew. How are you? <laughs> Good, thanks, mate. Now, take it's us through a little bit, about, bit of your history. Sure. Pharmaco is an, an Australian company um, that specialises in, in advanced delivery systems for ingredients that are used in the dietary supplement industry. Um, we, we started um, fairly fairly new, so, so we started in 2015, um, but we've achieved it quite quite a bit in that time, so... Our products are currently used in, in by over 50 companies around the world. Um, and we've also published uh, quite a few papers around, around about 15, um, specifically on delivery systems uh, and dietary supplements with, with another five in various stages of publication. Uh, we've also been acknowledged with various industry awards in, in Australia, Asia, Europe and America. Um, which which is showing uh, that that we're sort of on the right track with with a lot of these technologies and at the forefront of it. Okay, that's really interesting. And your your focus is with lipophilic delivery, correct? So we're talking, well, I would assume, about lipophobic constituents. Yeah, hydrophobic. Yeah, um, li- li- lipophilic. Hydrophobic, um, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> There's a lot of terminology. I'll try and not not go into too much of it. But but um, um, look, lipophilic in- ingredients are, uh, are quite interesting. They they make up uh, around about seventy percent of the total pool of ingredients, um, which but they offer the most interest in in terms of the conditions that that they affect. Um, so, for, for example, ingredients like um, curcumin, which is a quite popular ingredient, there's around 2,000 studies being published um, yearly on, on that ingredient. Mm. Extremely hydrophobic, um, lipophilic ingredient. Um, whenever you read any of the studies, they all say acts on this condition, but poorly absorbed. Mm. And P P A um, comes comes into the same same um, classes as, as that. So so works on quite a few in inflammatory conditions, um, but extremely poorly absorbed. Yeah. So I guess talking about curcumin for a tick, one of the terms which has been bastardised is the word bioavailability, rather than using the term absorption. And this has yeah. led to a lot of confusion as to the action of curcumin because in the end, we need to be taking each of these various brands or t- trademarked extracts and trialling them in humans to see if they actually work in humans because at the end, that's where the buck stops, correct? Yeah, that, that's that's right. It's, it's um, I always liken it to, to fine salt or coarse salt, you know, it's it's or rock salt, you know. So if if you're taking the same amount of, of salt as a finely ground powder versus a, a coarse crystal, um, you're not getting the same the same overall effect. It's probably a bad example because salt is 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 very well absorbed, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. it's very water soluble yeah. as well. But but it all comes down to surface area. Um, and and the more surface area you have um, the better absorption you can you can achieve with with these ingredients. Right. So one of my sort of questions has always been: okay, it's a it's a lipophilic, hydrophobic um, ingredient, but we have bile salts, so we can digest fats. Is it not enough just to take it with food? Well, what what happens with with your bile salts is 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 again they've only got access to to the area that's given to them okay so so if you're taking a large crystal of of pea for example 
um, the the bile salts first need to start attacking that surface to start um, breaking breaking it down to then create the chylomicrons, which transfer the ingredient across across the um, the epithelial cells in the gut to then get it into the bloodstream. So so what's what's important is 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 not just putting it in your mouth and 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 you know crossing your fingers that that you're absorbing it it's 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 um putting it in your mouth with the intention of getting it into your bloodstream because because that, that's where it has to get to to have an effect um the bigger the particle the less surface area available to to your to your lipase um the the less chylomicrons that, that are that are created um and the less absorption you have the added the added problem to all of this as well is that lipophilic ingredients tend to clump so even if you if you make small particles even if you micronize them it doesn't mean that your body now has access to the to that complete surface area okay because what they do is they just clump together into bigger bigger clumps um, and then it's up to the body to try and try and unclump it and and absorb it <laughs> you know, so, yeah yeah so, um, so, yeah. so that would obviously be a time issue when you're talking about um, transit time down the human gut where it's going to be absorbed therefore where it's going to act blah 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 do we know that about PEA where it's maximal absorption is? Well, forgive me. The site along the gut. Do we know that yet? Oh, look from from the the pharmacokinetic study we we conducted um, with 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 our delivery technology. It's it's getting absorbed fairly quickly. So so within an hour, um, wow, which okay. which means yeah, which which means it's getting absorbed mainly in the gut. Oh. Right. And so, okay, yeah. so that answers the question. If you don't all, um, um, get it into a suitable, suitably absorption form, forgive me, let me correct that. If you don't get it into a suitably absorbed form, then you've missed the gate. The horse has bolted by the time yeah. any action can be taken upon it. Yeah, you, you, you miss that window. See, the, the more you move down the intestine, the, the, the less acidic the conditions um, which then means um, the more hydrophilic you need to be to be able to get absorbed, you know. So, right. so um, with with a lot of these ingredients, once once they miss that opportunity in the stomach, um, the intestine doesn't help them much afterwards. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah. So, what about combinations? Like, for instance. I, um, Forgive me for going off track here, but I've got this real love of how foods interact with different nutrients and they can help each other. Do we know anything about PEA working with any, any other nutrients or perhaps even probiotics? Is PEA used as a substrate maybe by probiotics or, or is there anything that you can cast a light on there? Yeah, it's... it's um. We, we we haven't looked into it, but but I'm not aware of any um, ingredients that would have a synergistic effect um, in in increasing absorption, you know, of of PEA. Um, it it all comes down to when when you look at PEA as a as a um, molecule and and what the body uses it for. Um, it's 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 created within the body. And it's created within the body when it needs it, due to a due to a, a situation. Okay, so if I were to to punch you in the in the arm, um, the immediate reaction of the body would be send some send some PEA to that area to to um, null the pain, basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so so because of that, it naturally it hasn't needed to be um, hydrophilic or bio, bioavailable as such because you don't get it from your diet. 
your body makes it as it needs it. Um, right. So, so because of that reason, it's, it's like everything in nature. It's, it's, it, it works in how it was designed to work, you know? So, so it's, it's um, because we're not required to keep stores of PEA in our body and it makes it as it needs it. Um, you don't need to get any, any from your diet to, to help you, to help you along. Gotcha. Does it, does it tend to therefore have a reasonably short half-life and could also maybe a blockage in production of PEA endogenously? Could that be leading to, or one of the reasons why there's various dosages that are required for efficacy, like anywhere from 300 to, I think it was 1200. I think that's the yeah. maximal dose used. Is that right? Um, yeah, commercially, yeah, and, and what what has been studied as well, yeah. Um, it's it's um, uh, look the 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 half life is 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 very small. It's it's probably about about an hour. So although right. you get maximum absorption within an hour, it also starts to decline very quickly after that. Um, now. Now, um, with a lot of these these conditions, it, it all comes down to to how much inflammation you you're in, basically. You know, so so and, and that's what determines the the level, the, the dose. So for conditions with with low inflammatory situations, um, obviously low, lower doses are required there. For ones with higher, Inflammatory conditions, um, higher doses are needed there. Uh, we recently um, ran a study in, in Arizona uh, and, and looking at, at PEA and, and our PEA in particular with, with a delivery system um, and how, how it affects conditions like, uh, like COVID, for example. Um, so, so we had we had some computer simul simulations that that were showing that that PEA as a molecule attaches to the spike protein of of the COVID virus, um, but then it also attaches to the receptors of the spike protein on our cells as well. So it had this this double effect, but but obviously so to blocking. to yeah, double blocking there. So, so it was. It, it's theoretically, um, it should stop the virus from attaching to a cell and 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 infecting and replicating um, within that cell. So, so we tried it on 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 um, um, some people in in um, Arizona, um, and what we saw was was a, a lessening of of the effects of COVID. Um, in the in the population that that was taking the the levagen plus ingredient versus the one that was taking the, the control so so there was some some merit in in the theory um, but the dose for for that situation was extremely high so so as, again it was around about the thousand milligram dose yeah. Um, yeah and and the reason being is is you know you've got to look at viruses you know how many of them are and then you also need to try and affect however many trillion cells in your body, you know, to also also um, stop stop the the spike protein from from connecting to them. So a lot more was needed in that situation. Hence, hence why a lot, uh, you know the higher dose. Yeah, I just want to be clear for our viewers. Obviously, this is not to be construed as a treatment for COVID. We're not saying no. that, you know, vastly larger studies have got to be done. Um, but, hey, you know, there seems to be some merit in at least the theory, as you say, of double blocking yeah. that spike protein. So further work will elucidate that. Um, can I just ask, because of your interest in lipophilic delivery, there's there's so many claims out there. You know, we've we've got liposomes. I mean, gosh, they're, they're from years ago. They're from twenty odd years ago. You've got nanoparticles, which were newer on the market. Um, 
there's other lipophilic delivery vehicles. I remember one, I can't remember his name. He was one of the original guys, Rutolo, Bruce, Bruce Rutolo. Right. I think Garth Nicholson has done some work with glycerophosphates. Um, can you take us through to unwind this confusion that I have about sort of where they sit? What's their usefulness? Right, right, okay. Um, all right. They're, they're all useful in, in different different situations, yeah. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's a bit of an arsenal and you use – Parts of the arsenal, depending on the situation, you know. So, so look, if if I was if I was to look at it from a point of view of of what, um, well, how we see the world, okay. So, so you've to start with, you, you've got the 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 macro aspect, okay, and the, the macro aspect um, basically is everything you see daily, um, and even down to the smaller level where you know down to the millimeter level sort of thing where where um a magnifying glass can can help you help you along um you've then got the the micro world okay so so in the micro world you go past the millimeter millimeter stage and you go into the micron stage um and and to to get a a better view of that world you need a microscope Okay, then then we go a bit further. So we go into the nano the nano realm, um, visible wavelength uh, of light is is um, non-existent at, 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 in that realm. You know, so so you need things like scanning electron microscopes to be able to view um, anything uh, in, right. in that world now. The smaller the smaller you get, theoretically, the better absorption you achieve. Okay, um, but to to move from the micro to the nano, um, you need to have have ingredients that that dissolve in something, um, and and that something needs to be needs to be um, pleasant for a human to take or an animal to take, you know, so, so it can't be anything toxic. Um, mm. The problem you've got, you've, you've got with substances like PEA is they don't dissolve in anything. Okay. And when I, when I say dissolve, it's different to disperse. Okay. So, right. so when we're talking about dissolving something, we're talking about, um, free molecules of that substance being um, freely available in a in a in a subst in a solvent of some sort, whether it's water, alcohol, whatever whatever the substrate is. Um, now, PEA just doesn't dissolve in anything that's friendly to to people. Okay, so so. Um, trying to to make um, something that would work in the nano world, so a liposome, for example, um, is extremely difficult, if not impossible, for for PEA. Um, but what you can do with PEA is you can make it work in the in the micro world. Okay, so so. What we can what we can do there is is get it to disperse in 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 water, okay. And by dispersing it in water, you're you're now increasing its its surface area, which which then is allowing the the body to to have access to to as much um, surface as as it possibly can, um, and and get it absorbed basically. Yeah. So, gotcha. so, yeah. So, liposomes. Liposomes are fantastic. They're not for everything, um, and and they do take a lot of energy to create. Okay. So, so um, they're they're a very energy intense system to to make, um, and even when you do make them, a lot of your active is is not encapsulated by the liposomal structure okay right. so so a lot of the active is in the 
is in the solvent that you use to dissolve it, which is hanging around the liposome. Um, oh, hanging with, around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, on, not only inside it, it's outside it as well. Right. Okay. Um, but, but what liposomes offer is they offer a very targeted um, um, delivery system. So, so liposomes will, will, will get through, through the um, most membranes, okay? Because you're talking about structures that are, that are down the, the 50 nanometer um, area, okay? When, yeah. when you look yeah. at a typical cell, typical cell might be 20 microns. So 20 or 50 microns. So, so this, this thing is, is a thousand times smaller than a cell. Okay. But yeah. what it does do is it mimics the membrane of a cell. So it doesn't, the body doesn't see it as a foreign, as a foreign substance. And because of that, it takes it up quite, quite easily and readily into the cell. Okay, so so um, it's it's very targeted to deliver something straight into a straight into a cell, um, with with things like um, um, swollen my cells, you know, or, or my cells in general that are that are self emulsifying structures. So so you're not talking about expending any energy there to make this this substance. Okay, so or make this structure. So, so yeah. you've yeah. you've mixed you've you've made a, a a clever mixture of ingredients, which which as soon as it touches water, it instantaneous instantaneously creates um, a micellar structure. Okay, in that situation, right. yeah, in that situation, a hundred percent of the active is enclosed within the micelle. Okay, and it's because it's it's because it's lipophilic. The internal structure of the micelle is lipophilic. That's that's where it tends to go. Um, but they're not as targeted. Okay, so so um, it doesn't doesn't mimic the the cell wall. Um, it is a nice nice circular spherical structure, um, but but it can be made to be more. Uh, more targeted by other means, and and what I mean by that is by using ultrasound or magnetic waves um, or heat. So you know, um, hitting wow. a particular taking taking the substance with my cells, and then hitting a particular area with with magnets um, makes the my cell fall apart in that area and and release ah. the payload. Basically. Ah, okay. okay. That's getting that's really tricky. Now. That's 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 getting that's that's getting super advanced <laughs> delivery systems. But, but that's okay. that's kind of like along the lines of using, um, you know, chemotherapy and heating certain areas of the body, like for instance the tumor area. Um, and mm. we're talking orthodox medicine, not the whole body thermotherapy. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, they sort of pinpoint or target uh, a th a, an area for thermal excitation, um, yeah. in the hope that the chemotherapy will have a greater effect in that area. Is that the way it sort of works? Well, you, you can pig, you can piggyback you can piggyback onto that. So so you can you can <sighs> deliver a substance, a toxic substance, to the cancer um, enclosed yeah. in a micelle, deliver it to that area. And with on, on the proviso that when you hit it with the radiation of whatever sort, it falls apart and releases the payload. So so oh, it's, wow. it's it's very very precise and very directed. Um, in in, wow. in those situations. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's it's it's next gen stuff. But but um, gotcha. they're, they're, they're working they're working on it in, in various universities around the world. Um, gotcha. But yeah, look, my, my cells are great. They're they're, they're interesting. Um, um, not as not as small as as, as the the liposomes. A, a proper my cell is, but but the self emulsifying ones are are, are generally larger. Um, 
um, but nonetheless, they they still do a good job of of delivering delivering um, ingredients to within the blood plasma. Okay. Right. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit because you mentioned inflammation previously, and you've done some work with PEA and quercetin, right? Yep. Can, yep. can you tell us a little bit about why you chose quercetin rather than, say, curcumin or, um, I mean, Boswelli as a resin, you know, th there's so many yeah. anti-inflammatory agents that could have been chosen, um, EPA, DHA, for instance? Yeah, yeah. Look, um, we've done a lot of work on on all of those um, things, you know. So, so um, um, omega threes definitely um, done done quite a bit of work there. So, we're we're, we're able to increase their absorption sixfold, um, and and you know have an effect on an omega three index and and um, omega three. Omega six ratios as well, uh, very very positively um, ha have an effect, uh, even to the point where where we compared it to to um, krill oil, which is supposed to have a, a, a you know its own natural increased absorption and 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 a very um, good effect on all those parameters. But if you add some of our delivery technology to it, it makes it so much better again. Um, so, so look, probably the the single ingredient we've studied the most has been has been curcumin, um, but but P, PEA comes a very very close second. Um, we've we've had about uh, I'd say about five studies published on. On our Levagen Plus ingredient um, across multiple conditions, so so looking at it from a, a joint pain point of view to to um, delayed onset muscle soreness in in athletes um, to sleep and and how it affects sleep patterns and and um, yeah yeah. Um, alertness on awakening you know those 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 sort of situations um and and then then also as i was talking about the covid the covid study you know so in 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 other unorthodox situations as well <laughs> yeah um, yeah what, what about um, um neuralgias or neurological type conditions that's that's where it's supposed to shine so so um um, when when you read up about about PEA, it's 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 more so in in neuralgia um, that that it has an effect ra rather than um, infl or chronic inflammation in general. You know, so so something something acute. So you suffer something quickly. You need to address it. You take take your PEA. You address the the situation, and then then it all subsides. It all goes away. Um, right. Whereas if you've got a chronic condition like like arthritis, for example, you know, um, I'd, I'd be going for the curcumin. Um, it, it's, right. It's, it's yeah. It's it's so something got, you need it, to take. Are we talking about day. different inflammatory signals here? Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you're, you're talking about. Um, Numbing the pain versus versus treating the pain, yep. you know. So so yep. so that's that's the difference. Um, think think of it as as ibuprofen. You know, you've you've got pain for whatever reason. You take your ibuprofen, the pain goes away. But as soon as you stop taking ibuprofen, the pain comes back again. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but if it's a headache, for example, which is self limiting in its own right. Um, that's the one that works. PEA does does right. the job there. You know? Yeah. So and, things and, like I, headaches, I, migraines, um, sleep. You said um, arthralgias is going to be an interesting one, but DOMS that's a real interesting one. Yeah, 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 and 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 it def definitely had a, had an effect in in that area as well. So, but but it had more an effect on 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 markers um, that were not related to inflammation. 
So, so we ran a, a study in DOMS using both the Levagen Plus, the PEA, and our yeah. Hydrokirk, which is the Kirkerman. Um, and then, then we were, you know, looking at at swelling, swelling of of, of the, the the muscle tissue, um, NF kappa beta, um, CRP, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was just a whole raft of of markers. Um, what we noticed was was that the curcumin was having more more an effect on the traditional inflammatory markers. The PEA was having an effect on on the other measures that that weren't related to to inflammation as such, you know. Wow! So so it's, it was yeah, it was interesting in in that it reduced overall reduced the delayed onset muscle soreness by by a third basically. So so where the control was was. Um, um, still affected after day three, after the exercise, mm -hmm. the treated groups um, were able to go back to training after after the second day. Right. Which then, so yeah, so which forgive me because so I'm thinking about the timeline of DOM. So I'm thinking about you do the exercise. Uh, yep. Day one's okay. Day two is murder. <laughs> yeah. So you're yep. saying that people can return to exercise on day two? After day after day two. Yeah, after wow. day two. Yeah. So you still yeah. gotta go through hell. <laughs> well, it's it's reduced hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so is that why you would use it commonly with other anti-inflammatory agents? Like you, you know, you've done some work on curcumin, there's quercetin, and yeah. you know, we've mentioned a few of the others. Yeah, and, and look, there's, yeah. there's about 300 inflammatory markers that, that we know about, okay? So, so God knows how, how many there really are. Um, yeah. Now, all, all of these substances are having an effect on multiple inflammatory markers, but, but there's nothing there that's doing everything, you know? So, so, so it, it, it's, it's basically um, what condition are you trying to, to affect what inflammatory markers are having an effect on that condition and then trying to find the suitable ingredient that, that can affect those inflammatory markers. Um, so from, from our aspect, we, we, we chose curcumin because it's got such a high spectrum of inflammatory markers that, that yeah. it has an effect. Yeah. Yeah. So with regards to PEA, though, relevant dosages, do you tend to use loading dosages and then pull down to get a really quick effect, get over it, get over DOMS and get on with your day? Or do you tend to use a standard sort of medium dose yeah. or whatever, like in, 300, in 600 the, milligrams? The, yeah, sorry. In, in the DOMS um, study, that, that's exactly what we did. So, so it was a, a high single dose um, just before the exercise, um, ah. and and the exercise was was quite brutal, you know. So so um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was basically leg presses um, to to eighty percent of their capacity, and 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 then and then added added more until they burnt out, basically until they couldn't do do one <laughs> so so it was quite brutal it was designed to induce doms <laughs> let's put it that way yeah 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 and and what oh. dose did you use um in in that particular one it was it was um um it wasn't high it was it was only 100 170 milligrams of, oh, of the levagen plus yeah which which translates to roughly about um, 150 milligrams of PA. Right. Oh, that's not high at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then they I just. I was thinking like 1200. No, 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 no. The, the, the only one that, that, that we did in anywhere close to that number was, was the, the serious condition. Yeah. The, right. the, the COVID study. Yeah. That, 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 that yeah. was the only one. Yeah, gotcha. Um, even even with um, I be, so we did a comparative study and and I can give you a quick heads up. I can't can't go into too much detail because it hasn't been published yet. But but um, we 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 put head to head 
um, Levagen Plus versus ibuprofen um, in mild to severe headaches. Um, oh. And and the the good news is 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 um, it the the Levagen Plus um, reduced the amount of the the, the time that it took. Um, to to get back to to normal, so to say. So right. so where ibuprofen was taking um, two hours to to um, get rid of the the serious headache, uh, Levagen Plus was taking about ninety minutes. So wow. significant, significantly less. Yeah. Oh, that's highly yeah. significant. Yeah. And and for a um, natural and so substance, along with that. Yeah, so along with that, you know, people taking ibuprofen regularly, um, you've got issues of gastric irritation, such and such. Um, what sort of safety issues are there with PEA? Anything? Yeah, there's there's none of those issues. Um, so so when when you look at the um, the drop the dropouts, you know, with with most of your studies, um, you, you get an indication of of how how many of them are real and how many are. Uh, you know, a figment of people's imagination. Um, it's it's we don't see any serious condition um, adverse effects with with the Levagen Plus. Um, right. On the contrary, yeah, I, ibuprofen has has many many issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think it's I think it's um, is it eleven hundred people per year. I'm, I'm going to get this wrong. It's either 1,100, 1,600 people per year in the US die from correctly prescribed NSAIDs. Um, um, yeah. But you know what? I'm, I'm just wondering about, I know you're talking about it's better in the acute sort of situations, but even in more chronic situations, if you could take, let's say, the two ibuprofen as a loading dose with, say, one Levagen Plus, then as the box instructs, you take one or two subsequently of the ibuprofen imagine if they can keep on just one imagine the lessening of the gut insult from just have, having one halving that dose of NSAIDs a 50% yeah. reduction of NSAIDs and taking PEA yeah. to take the rest of that load off the headache and things like that that's quite dramatic yeah we're, we're working on a study at the moment that that's doing exactly that so so halving the oh. dose of ibuprofen and replacing it with with levagen plus um, and, right. and seeing how how it affects it. So, in, initial results are quite are quite promising. In 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 that, um, it has a better effect. The combo has a better effect than the ibuprofen on its own. Yeah. Now, George, um, I know that sometimes you publish studies, and you know that depending on the publishing house, you've got to pay for the, uh, the actual paper and sometimes that's scores of dollars. But where can people find out more? Can we get all of your research, please, to put up on the Designs for Health website? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, look, it, m- most of it's in, in the public domain, so so I, oh, I, cool. can, I can direct direct you to the links. Yeah, not a that, problem. That's great. That's wonderful. George, thanks so much for taking us through PEA today. It's really interesting stuff that you're doing with different drug delivery systems. Very interesting stuff indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. (laughs) And thank you, everyone, for joining us today on Wellness by Designs. Remember, you can catch up on all of the other podcasts and indeed the show notes to this podcast and George's research on the Designs for Health website. I'm Andrew Whitfield-Cook. This is Wellness by Designs. Oh, 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 oh